All right, so that was actually a drug smuggler's truck falling into the Rio Grande River. And this is video from the Texas State Troopers. It shows the lengths drug smugglers will do to get away. The cartels often send drugs across right as large groups of illegal immigrants overwhelm Border Patrol on the Rio Grande. So playing on the best of Americans to get their drugs across. New data today from the Texas Department of Public Safety shows the amount of drugs they've seized this year. 50,000 pounds of marijuana, 6,000 pounds of cocaine, 39,000 pounds of meth, 300 pounds of heroin, and 1,500 pounds of fentanyl. And that 1,500 pounds of fentanyl may not sound like a ton compared to the amount of other drugs, but that's more than 344 million lethal doses of fentanyl, enough to kill every man, woman, and child in America. Joining us now, independent journalist Ali Bradley. Uh, you, you see all these images, and Ali, you've captured them, of all the people coming across, but as the Border Patrol agents are tied up processing the people, that's exactly when the cartels send the much more valuable drugs across. You're exactly right, Leland, and that's what we're seeing happening because these cartel, these coyotes, what Customs and Border Protection are telling me now is that they're actually creating humanitarian crises by forcing these families that we're seeing self-surrender, forcing them to cross the Rio Grande in very dangerous conditions with very small children and really precarious situations out there. And we're seeing kids dying. We're seeing kids drowning. Just today, there were two drownings in Del Rio, two little boys, brothers, a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old. Leland and the nine-year-old is still missing and those little boys are from Africa and they they also pulled an adult male from the Rio Grande as well in the Del Rio area for some perspective in Del Rio on an average year before last year's surge they were only seeing about three to four drownings a year the sheriff tells me now since February of 21 they've had 20 or more drownings in that area now just down the river in Eagle Pass last month alone Leland they had 23 Three drownings, and that didn't include the National Guard soldier that lost his life trying to help some of these migrants cross. Now, interestingly enough, the National Guard soldier dove in to help people he thought was trying to come to America for a better life. It turns out they were drug smugglers uh, themselves. As you talk to Border Patrol and the Sheriff's Department down there, uh, we get these numbers from the Texas State Troopers in terms of how much they've seized. We know that, that roughly 300,000 uh, illegal immigrants have gotten through the known gotaways, the unknowns, who knows. But mm -hmm. if there's this many drugs coming across that they capture, what do they estimate gets through or gets away or they don't even know came across? Oh, my gosh, that's such a hard one, right? Because they're gotaways. So it's hard to really get that number honed in and really specific. But I will tell you this. We, you mentioned those numbers. That breaks down in March. We had at least 2,000 known gotaways per day. So when that happens, and those people are the ones we know about, right? Those are the ones we're seeing unknown gotaways. We saw them on camera, or they were involved in a pursuit, and that bailout happened, and those people were never caught. And yeah, those are the ones that you have to worry about, right? And when all of these people are coming across, Leland, we've talked about it. The border agents are too busy. The border is unmanned, and they have not brought in a lot of additional resources because they just aren't there. Right now, they're uh -huh. asking for volunteers. Right, you know, they, they always talk about surging, surging resources. They don't have any more research, resources left to surge because you need them everywhere. You can't rob from Peter to pay Paul at some point. Mm -hmm. um, as you talk to your folks down on the border, what do they expect now coming into the summer, the end of Title 42, as it relates to drugs? Are the cartels waiting until there's even more of, of an issue in terms of the number of people coming across to be able to move more drugs? Well, that just makes sense, right? The more people that are coming across, the more distractions there are, the more that they can really control who's going in and who's not. But I'm going to tell you this, Leland, Customs and Border Protection told me yesterday that migrants are actually being, not only being used as currency to these cartels, but the rival gangs, the rival cartels are actually taking the migrants and killing them and using them as basically pawns in right. these gangs and in these rival cartels. So we've got a new level of how these people are being used and, you know, extorted and exploited. I mean, right now what's happening on our southern border, there's no way I don't think to look at it 
when you see all these drownings and you see all these, you know, drugs coming in. I mean, look at those photos. It's hard to deny that there is absolutely a crisis going on in one capacity or another. And these border yeah. agents, they, you know, they're maxed out. They just don't understand why these people can't go across the port of entry. Many border agents tell me, okay, if this is a situation, let's stop making them well, cross no, you, the you river. You make a, you make a great point. People in cartel stands. Right. The, one of the reasons they don't go across the port of entry is because the cartels are bringing them across the Rio Grande. So they mm -hmm. can get their, their drugs across with the border agents uh, otherwise occupied. Ali, thank you very much. Great reporting as always. It's pretty amazing if we put uh, the video back up, Marnie, of this chase and where the truck ended up. It ended up in the Rio Grande. Mm -hmm. And you see the driver of the truck get out of the truck and swim back across the Rio Grande into Mexico. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's terrible what we're Wild. seeing. And it's heartbreaking to see that image oh. of the little boy who was crossing today and did not make it. And his brother is still missing. So clearly these cartels, the smugglers, smugglers it's a major issue. According to an upcoming memoir by former Secretary of Defense Mark Esper, uh, other people had ideas about options on how to handle it. Former President Trump once proposed launching missiles into Mexico to destroy drug labs that are run by the cartels. That'd be one way to handle it. According to Esper, Trump raised the idea of bombing the drug labs at least twice in the summer of 2020. I mean, I guess um, everybody there, there throw, a, out, throw out hey, your ideas. Hey, there, you know, there, was a, there was a book about that, the yep. Tom Clancy book, Clear and Present Danger. They bombed the drug labs and the drug kingpins uh, in Colombia in the book. Um, so, you know, at some level, these cartels really own parts of northern Mexico. When I was down there and we were watching the cartels on the other side, there was no law. The cartels own this. They're paramilitary organizations with large heavy weapons, the crew serve machine guns, RPGs and the like that they're pointing at the Border Patrol and the Texas Department of Public Safety. At some point, this is going to turn into a shooting war across and a gun battle across. We've already seen the National Guard shot at as well. So he, he wasn't perhaps far off from where this is headed. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.